welcome to my sewing room. We have a wonderful show for you today. One of the first things that we're going to do is share with you the beautiful embroidery stitches used on baby things. This, these embroidery stitches are on this wonderful uh, little flannel receiving blanket with pinks and greens. Then beautiful embroidery stitches can be done on a little pillow for a baby. And you know what? This style pillow is frequently used for a ring bearer pillow in a wedding also. Isn't that just sweet, sweet embroidery that goes right down in the middle of this little puffing pillow? And I always remind people we must not forget the little boys when we're doing elegant embroidery and elegant sewing. This little boy's suit has the beautiful yellow trim and the sweetest little white on white embroidery and a little bit of white embroidery that goes right down the strip of yellow linen on the little suit. Another thing you're going to learn about today is how to put together the beautiful, beautiful angel quilt that you've been seeing little bits and pieces of for the whole series. This beautiful uh, quilt is red silk dupioni and has angels in the corners, silk ribbon embroidery circles, and then the wonderful little angels all down the quilt that are playing different musical instruments, and you're going to learn how to put it together. Now we're going to move to our quilt segment where Margaret Taylor is going to share with you just how it is done. I'm very pleased to have as my guest today my business colleague and very close friend Margaret Taylor. Margaret is also the quilting editor for So Beautiful magazine. Margaret, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. This quilt has been so much fun to work on and put together. When we all think of angels, we think of something really ethereal, like was painted by the masters. And that's what we tried to capture in the quilt. But before we start on the construction, let me tell you about a few things I have found that are fairly new to the quilting industry. And you know, all sewers have to have their stuff. <laughs> Any new gadget, we want it, right, Martha? <laughs> Absolutely. This is really a great, useful gadget, though. It's a quilter's ruler, and it's in half-inch increments. But the neat thing about the ruler is that at each end, there are slots that fit the rotary cutter. So you can put your rotary cutter down, line it up, and if you want something that's an inch and a half wide, you mark, drop, work over three half inch pieces, slip your rotary cutter in, and simply cut your strip. And if you need a lot of strips, like you're going to need on this quilt, they're all going to come out the same width and perfectly straight. And I even use the rotary cutter to cut my batting in strips because we're putting this quilt together a little bit different from what we've done the others. And so when I needed my batting cut, I just put folded my batting several layers, put it under there, and cut it out so that all of my batting was the same width. And then, of course, I did it with the wider for the borders. Now, let me just slip this down right here and then we'll start on the quilt construction. Now, in the quilt that I use, since you think of angels as being really ethereal and just kind of not there, I used two layers of batting. I wanted to have that puffy, um, real soft effect. Now, this is two layers of batting put together. This is a, it's a, not the high loft batting, but it's one you can use for sewing machines. The one thing that I will caution you about is when you're working with two layers of batting, it has a tendency to slip. So what you have to do is use the quilt tack gun and put lots of these little tacks all around. Now, what I've done here on this particular block, we're going to pretend the block is finished. And of course, you don't want to leave this size block without it being quilted because if you use it as a wall hanging or when you launder the quilt, it, the batting will slip. So what I did was just took a very simple decorative stitch off the machine and stitched it around the outside of the design, anchoring that block. And I stitched through all layers. And do all of this before you start um, actually constructing the quilt. Therefore, it's all done and you don't have all of the bulk under your machine. Now, another thing you need to do before you start quilting is you need to cut all of your sashing strips all of your border strips, and all of your batting. That way you can sit at the machine, you can simply put it together, and you don't have to jump up and down. Now you never have strips of sashing or borders that's long enough, but in order to keep it from showing, 
that it's been stitched together with a straight seam. We're going to stitch this at an angle. And you see how I've placed these two pieces together and I've marked it. Let's just stitch this together and see what it's going to look like. You're just using a straight stitch on Just a straight stitch. And I also have went ahead and put on, Martha, the quarter inch foot. Um, it's a quilting foot that fit you can get for most machines now. And what happens when you turn is your sashing comes together and then you simply go back and take your scissors and trim this away. Now in doing this, you take it to the ironing board and press it and it'll be nice and smooth. And you really have to look hard to find where these things are pieced together. Now what we're doing with this quilt, it's called Quilt As You Go. You've already got your block quilted. You've got your sashing cut. We've put the sandwich of the batting and the, t and the two blocks. This is going to be the back side, which will be your lining, and this is your top finished block. We take our uh, sashing strips and we put them right sides together. Then we take as many layers of batting as we're going to use. We put them right sides together and we put it under the presser foot of the machine. Now, as I said, this has a quarter inch foot on it. If you can't get a quarter inch foot for your machine, that's fine. Just make sure that whatever seam allowance you're using is the same on all blocks so they'll fit together. And from here to the outside edge is one quarter inch. Now, I also have a walking foot on this machine you may need to get one to use for your machine. I have increased my stitch length to three because it's when you're stitching with all this batting, it's a little bulky. We're just going to stitch a little bit and show you what it looks like. And then you simply see how it pulls it up. Then you're going to, I've got one finished or one sewn together. It, the batting looks really messy, so I always put the batting on the bottom side, but I stitched it together, and then I went to, this, to the ironing board, and this is really critical that you do a lot of pressing because you're turning up two layers of fabric on each side plus your batting. So you want to make sure that you get it all nice and smooth. And if the fabric is bulkier than the silk, you'll want to go in and trim that away. Then when you get your blocks together, it's time to strip them together and make them one long piece. And you're going to get to a point that you can't stitch your batting and everything together at once. You're going to have to leave one piece open and then you simply turn it under and press it and pin it in place. Now you can stitch it down at this point by hand or you can stitch it down by machine. That's strictly your preference. What we've done with the blocks for the angels is once we got the angels put together, we decided that we wanted to cord. I think I've pinned these to the to the boards. It's all right. <laughs> have to unpin them. That's right. It always <laughs> happens when you're on TV. We're going to take off the quarter inch foot and I'm going to put the regular foot on. You can use an open toe applique foot or you can use the regular foot. And, and if you don't have one and you wouldn't have to go buy one, we'll show you how to do it. Now this braid is put on with white thread. Of course, you're not going to want to do that. But we're going to put this on and we want the stitch to just, it's a zigzag stitch, and we want it to just cover the braid. Now the reason I put this particular foot on is it has a slot in the side of it and you've got to hold the braid up or the braid will roll on you. So I line up my mark on my seam and I get my stitch set like I want it. And let's make it just a little bit wider. And if you hold it up and use it, and we're putting it right on the seam allowance, it's going to kind of work as a frame for your angels. It just adds that little bitty touch. And then when you get to the end and you're ready to um, attach it to the other piece, you just trim it real close, Martha, and just zigzag over it, just like you do in the corded applique. It's, it's a lot like that same principle. Margaret, that's fascinating. And you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to look one more time at the quilt and let you just see how beautiful this quilt is in its finished form. 
This is my very favorite quilt that we've done on any of our television shows, Margaret. <laughs> oh, it's my favorite. It really is. And I just know there's so many of our viewers that probably collect angels as I collect angels. And I thought you'd like to have an angel quilt to hang in your home or to put on your bed. Anyway, I just thought you would enjoy it as much as we did. Now then, we have heirloom embroidery stitches for you by hand. Today I'm so pleased to have as my guest Margaret Boyles from Atlanta. Margaret is the author of 25 needlework books and she is a regular columnist for So Beautiful magazine. Margaret, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, especially to talk about some of my favorite baby stitches, little easy stitches. Oh, Margaret, I can't wait to see what you're going to do. What are you going to do today? Well, this is a baby receiving blanket, one of the old baby pieces of baby equipment that we still use. They come in the hospital, they wrap them in receiving blankets to this day. So what I have is a, a yard and a quarter square of white flannel. And I have just, with the blue pencil, traced my little outline on here. I've put a hem in it with the machine. And we're going to, I'm going to show you the blanket stitch, which I have on the edge, these little roses, the feather stitch, and some Lazy Daisy leaves. All right. <laughs> okay. Now, this is a real easy project because there's not a lot of work on it. It's big, but it's not a lot of work, and it goes fast. Now, I have just put a simple little hem in this piece of flannel and stitched it with the machine, as I said. I'm using a double strand of embroidery floss for this blanket stitch because I want it to be big enough to be pretty and to show. The blanket stitch is an old stitch, and it's very easy, and I'm making my stitch go through the whole entire hem. And it's a loop stitch, and you make it by putting the needle in under the hem, coming up through your loop, and pulling up the tension. Margaret, what size needle are you using? This is a size 8 cruel needle okay. with a double strand of floche. Silk thread is beautiful if you want to make a little bit of fancier blanket, but this is one that will go through, if Daddy's doing the laundry, this will go through the washer and the dryer. <laughs> Except when it's dyed pink, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that happens. But this is a wonderful stitch. It, it always fascinates me because the, some of the new sewing machines do a stitch like this, and they have a program by which you can go in and make it a little more irregular so it looks more like handwork. Oh, okay. So that, that's a fun thing to do. And it really does look pretty if you use a heavy enough thread. Now the other stitch that I want to do on the blanket while I'm working on is the feather stitch. I think it's everybody's favorite Absolutely. baby stitch. Absolutely. And it can be in all different sizes. I'm doing it fairly big here because I don't want this to be too much of a time consuming project because receiving blankets after all aren't heirlooms. And so we, we're not going to put this in somebody's uh, hope chest. We'll just use this. A baby will come along and need this blanket. So to start the feather stitch, you just bring your needle up, and I'm going to use this blue line here as my guideline. That's a washable pencil uh, pen that will come right out. Put your needle down. This is a loop stitch. Pull your tension so you have a pretty little, it looks almost like a J. Then go down one stitch length on the other side of the line. I've got the thread under the needle. Just pull it through and adjust your tension so you have a little J going in that direction. Then you alternate, come down on this side, and just keep going. It's, the important thing is to keep your stitches about the same size and pull up your tension to about, to keep it real nice and even. And that's all there is to the feather stitch. You can make it much wider, and you can do it double and triple and so forth, but this, this is basically it for maybe a baby blanket or so forth. Now this little rose that I have on here is one that I learned from my grandmother, so I call it Maggie's Rose. I don't think I've ever seen it in a book, but it's really easy and it's sweet. To begin, I make three or maybe four stitches with a darker thread for the center. This also could be three or four little French knots depending on how high you want it to be. I'm just going to make two here so we can get it 
get this little rose started. And I'll get rid of my needle. Then I bring the needle up at one end of my little center stitches. And then put it back in at the other end and just bring it out about halfway. Then I wrap the thread around the needle, pulling it up, not real tight, but snugly against it. That's one wrap, two wraps, and this will be the third wrap. Right like that. Then I put my thumb on top of it and pull the needle through. And that just keeps my stitches from sliding around when I'm pulling it through. Pull it till this lies flat. Then you make a little straight stitch right there on the end. And then to hold this end down, you come up at this end. And make another little straight stitch right there to hold that one down. And you can get pretty effects by putting yellow French knot centers in there or making the outside dark and the inside light. It's a fun thing. Some people like, if, if you're doing them real big, very often we do them quite big with wool, to put four little cross stitches on to hold them. Now the sweet thing to put at the sides is a, a lazy daisy stitch leaf, which is another real easy little baby stitch. I brought my thread up from the wrong side put my needle right down just about this, in the same hole and hold my thread below it in a loop. Pull the needle through. And don't pull it too tightly. Let it have a little bit of shape and then go down at the end. And there's your little lazy daisy stitch leaf. You know, Margaret, you, you were talking about your grandmother taught you some of these stitches. Don't you think it's important for mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers to teach their little girls and start getting an interest in embroidery? I really do, and it's funny. People like me very often get frustrated because our daughters don't really want to do this. But then when they get to be about 20 or 25, <laughs> they think, I missed it. I really should have learned these. And most children, there's a stage that they go through when they are receptive and ready and you just have to know to recognize that. You know and what? Do it. I agree with you completely. Thank you so much, Margaret. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. And next I have a beautiful doll dress for you. This little doll dress has so many precious features. As you know, we're doing a pinafore in this series, and this little doll dress has a precious little pinafore. It has laces zigzagged together for the center of the pinafore, and the little ruffle is absolutely wonderful. You see the little silk ribbon that's run through the beading? Now move on down and look at this pocket. That is truly what is called a lacy pocket, and I'm going to show you how to make that in just a minute. Moving on down the doll dress are more strips of laces zigzagged together with the silk ribbon. And now I have a real surprise. Look at the petticoat or the underdress of this doll dress. It is just as sweet as the pinafore that goes on the top. Now, let me share with you a few of the tricks on making this doll dress. The underdress, right here, I have a little sample of the underdress. It has entredeau, insertion, beading, insertion, entredeau, three tucks, and this is really neat, a tiny, tiny little decorative sewing machine embroidery stitch running down the middle, and then the same thing is on the bottom with, in, with edging on the bottom also. The bodice of this little dress has those same tucks, one, two, three tucks, and that tiny, tiny, beautiful little machine embroidery stitch done ecru on ecru, which runs down the center. The neckline is very pretty, too, with its entredeau and gathered lace and a tiny little purchase silk ribbon rosette. The sleeve has that same treatment of one, two, three tucks and the little machine embroidery running down it. And then on the bottom of the sleeve, which I've already gathered it and sort of gotten it ready for you here, is entredeau, some more of the tucks, entredeau and gathered lace. Now then, let me show you how to make that little pocket. I just love this little pocket. 
First of all, you're going to gather, uh, excuse me, butt your laces together and zigzag them. And then you have insertion, entredeau, and gathered lace at the top of this little pocket. Now, on the bottom, I have made an entredeau and lace string. This is what I call an entredeau and lace string. Trimming one side of the entredeau, gathering the laces, butting them up, and zigzagging them. Now then, in order to attach it to the outside of this pocket, I pin around the curve, and I'm also going to need to clip around that curve. As you know, anytime you're going to take a straight piece around a curve, it needs to be clipped. That way it will fit better. After I go all the way around the pocket, I'm going to straight stitch along the ditch of that entredeau. Straight stitch. Then after I straight stitch, I will come in and trim away about half of that uh, seam allowance there. And then I will go back and simply zigzag over this seam allowance that is left. Zigzag, zigzag, zigzag in order to finish it. And of course, I could do that on a serger also. Then after the little pocket is finished, you simply lay it down and straight stitch it to the garment, or you could zigzag it. And then here's the little bottom of the skirt with the pieces of lace butted together, a little bit of beautiful robin's egg blue silk ribbon embroidery, and then the entredeau at the top and the bottom, and straight lace on the bottom. And now I have a beautiful home decorating item for you. I just love pillows where I can use little bits and pieces from my wonderful antiques. And you know what? This pillow could really use some scraps if you have just some antique scraps. I think this is so pretty. It's in a triangular shape with shades of lavender and green and yellow, little tiny rosebuds around on it. Here's a little bit of a fancy band left over, just a little bit, and I love to use all kinds of scraps. Let me show you how this pillow was put together. It started out with a triangular piece of fabric, which is underneath. I have another one of these triangles. But can you see how we started out to get the shape? Then I began to add all kinds of goodies, an old handkerchief. You know what? I bet you some of you have some of these handkerchiefs left, the printed ones. I don't really know what era they were, but what are you going to use them for? Well, this pillow is what you're going to use it for. I put it on the corner. I have some lace under here. Maybe you, the last dress you did for your daughter or your granddaughter or your godchild or your niece had a little bit of fancy band left over. This is the perfect place. Slip it underneath there. There's a little bit of Battenberg lace and the other corner of that handkerchief. Now then, after you get it all pinned into place, then you can machine baste all the way around the triangle. Remember I told you there's a triangle underneath here. Machine baste all around the triangle, then trim away all of the excess trim. Then you can use your beautiful machine decorative stitches in lavender or yellow or just white and go along all the edges and then here comes some fun. I have just some little scrap pieces of ribbon, a little motif with pansies on it, a little bit of lace, some tiny buttons, and even some little purchased silk ribbon roses that I can have all kinds of fun. And after I have cut this out, then I can stitch my little goodies on my pillow. And then I have here lace around the edge and the back is just plain on the pillow. Now then, come on to my attic where I have a beautiful antique garment to share with you. Shadow work embroidery has been one of the most popular of all the techniques in heirloom sewing. However, it's very unusual to find a shadow work embroidery on an antique piece. I have one for you today. The shadow work embroidery by hand starts on this high collar. It's actually a beautiful flower with some little stems. Then the embroidery comes down the front of the blouse, which has uh, six tucks on either side of the shoulder. But the shadow work embroidery, the big flowers and the beautiful stems and the leaves are all done in shadow work embroidery and it comes down the front of this blouse. There is some more shadow work embroidery over here on the sleeve. It's a, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a seven sided flower, just like there's seven sided flowers on the rest of the blouse. Thank you for joining me in my sewing room today. I certainly hope you'll be with us next time.